Hi, this is Pat Iyer with Legal Nurse Podcast, and I have with me today Alexi Bracey, who I met at a conference that was focused on connecting people so that they could collaborate and see how they could assist each other. Alexi's topic is one that I know you're going to want to pay attention to because it's going to touch you. It may touch your life in the future or might be touching your life right now, whether you are taking care of patients, whether you have family members who are at risk for this. And it also influences the cases that attorneys litigate when they deal with people with this particular problem. Alexi, I know we've built up the suspense. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm delighted to be here. Let's talk about the topic, which is dementia. Can you give us a sense of what you've been reading and and what you've been focusing on? And I know you've studied this area a great deal. What are some of the causes that are now coming out as being related to causing dementia? Well, the causes um, are a result of accumulation uh, of bad lifestyle habits in your 20s, 30s, and 40s. But the main causes that are sort of ex- exact, um, um, expanded more to the forefront are actually the foods that we eat in the form of glyphosates, which is the active ingredient found in Monsanto's Roundup. And the other key factor is Wi-Fi. And so now with the advent of 5G being introduced, it's more even, will be even more prevalent. But you can, there are things you can do to minimize these risks. Well, let's break those down a little bit. And I know that people are going to hear bad habits in your 20s and 30s and 40s. Can you tell us what that means? Well, you know, I mean, most people are guilty of saying, tomorrow, I'll stop eating all the sugary desserts. Tomorrow, I'll start exercising. Tomorrow, I'll get more sleep. Tomorrow, um, I'll eat a healthier diet, but tomorrow never comes. And there's always an excuse. Well, the holidays are in the way. Um, I've got company, Um, whatever. We always have excuse, but those excuses lead to things down the road that magnify and become a real issue in our life. You know, why do people, why are people healthy and don't have any illnesses, so to speak? It's because of they're, they're committed to their health and their lifestyle habits that give them a, a good health and, and well-being. So, you know, is your health really important to you? It is to me because more than 20 years ago, I can say cancer saved my life. And why I say that is it changed my lifestyle habits. And I shifted my focus more on totally on health and not what I was doing for a living. I was, I was a chef at the time. So I just changed my, my traditional chef hat to one of a plant-based chef hat. And I spent, I spent the last 20 plus years learning all I can about health and, 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 and well-being. And it, it all comes down to health habits. You know, you know, do you have a habit of turning off the lights when you go to, uh, uh, to, to save electricity? Do you have a habit of of making sure your engine oil is clean. It's a habit. So all those habits lead to either, or lack of habits lead to either positive results or negative results. So it's the same thing with our health. You remind me of when my husband found out that he had colon cancer um, 25 years ago. The surgeon met him for his pre-op visit and told him that he would need to have a colon resection. And he said, Mr. Iyer, it would be a very good idea if you were not a smoker by next Tuesday. My husband was at a pack, pack and a half a day. I had tried all kinds of things, Alexi, to help him stop smoking from tears to manipulation, to education, to conjoling, to pleading and begging. Nothing worked. But that surgeon's sentence made him a non-smoker and he's never touched another cigarette. And we, we did go through a diet change after that because I read a study at, from University of Pennsylvania that said that if you have more roughage in your diet, you have a decreased risk of a recurrence 
So my husband and I were eating meat at the time. We stopped that. We went to a plant-based diet. I'm not saying that's the only factor that has kept him alive because he was very fortunate. He did not have any lymph node involvement. He was just a hair away from having that cancer spread in his body. But it certainly made a difference in our diet and in his lungs, which were able to return back to a healthy state when he was no longer pouring nicotine into them several times a day. Awesome. You know, he, he had the support with you and together collectively, you made a huge impact, not only in his life, but in your life as well. True, true. He ended up being able to be a father to his two sons who he had a chance to see grow up because his health was saved at that point. Um, tell us a little bit more. You, you mentioned bad habits from the 20s, 30s, and 40s. And I know there are people listening to this who will say, oh, I can't go back and change what happened to me at that time, but I can certainly change myself going forward. I know that um, the chemical roundup has been in the news because I believe that there are a number of lawsuits against the manufacturer for the harmful effects of Roundup. Can you tell us a little bit more about that chemical? Uh, well, the chemical is glyphosate, and there are currently, um, as of about three or four months ago, there were 42,000 lawsuits against the company. It is no longer Monsanto because uh, Monsanto was bought by Bayer, um, proving that um, uh, all related to cancer. There was a huge victory last year by a groundskeeper to the tune of like $89 million because it was proved without, proven without a shadow of a doubt that his, his um, cancer was a result of the glyphosates that he was using to spray the city, um, city playgrounds. And mm. glyphosates, besides being sprayed on food, is sprayed in golf courses, in parks, any green grassy areas in towns or cities. Some, po some people use it on their lawns because they want want it to stay green and, and, and um, you know, kill all the weeds. But the big concern is the fruits and vegetables that it is sprayed on. And, and how it came to be known was the wheat problem, you know, because, because people became intolerant to the wheat, having gluten sensitivities, but it was sprayed with glyphosates. And there's quite a few other vegetables that people aren't aware that are sprayed with glyphosates. For example, oats, all beans and legumes, tomatoes, potatoes, squash, zucchini, sunflower seeds, and flax seeds. For sure, those are sprayed with glyphosates. And there's probably more that could be added to the, uh, mm. to the group now. I know that I have used Roundup only occasionally, but there's a particular type of weed that creates this thorny structure to it and Roundup kills it. I used to try to pull the weed out and the guy who cuts my grass said, no, you need to use Roundup on it because it will kill it, the entire weed. But we have um, vegetable gardens on our property that enable us to grow some of our vegetables, but you know, the vast majority of the people who are listening to this and in certain times of the years can't grow anything at all are reliant on the choices in the grocery store of either organic or non-organic vegetables. Are you making an argument, and I think you are, for why we should be buying organic as opposed to the ones that have been sprayed and treated? Well, definitely the ones that have been sprayed and treated, but there's a really great website, ewg.org, which stands for Environmental Working Group. And every year they come out with what is called the Dirty Dozen or the Healthy 15. And so the Dirty Dozen are the fruits and vegetables that are, that are the most heavily sprayed or have been that past year in the United States. And then the Healthy 15 are the ones that you don't have to worry about getting um, organic if unless your pocketbook can afford it. So, you know, and you can download it while business card size and carry it in your purse with you when you go shopping. Uh, so you can, you can reference it. That's a good point because I know that there are 
list like that and I don't have them memorized, but I think about them when I head to the grocery store. Is it sufficient to rinse off things like grapefruit, I mean, um, grapes and strawberries and apples that have been sprayed? Are you eliminating the toxins by doing that? Or is it too deep into the fruit it's, to it's remove? Too, it's, yeah, it's too deep into the flesh of the fruit. You, you, you couldn't do it. Well, that's discouraging. Yes, it is discouraging, but just, you know, the way it is. So, you know, you can't use shortcuts for your health. You know, if, you know, in the wintertime when you can't get the vegetables that need to be organic, well, then just substitute something else. That's, that's your only alternative. Have you noticed, and I know you live in, in Canada and, and I live in the United States, but have you noticed how you can get all kinds of fruit out of season? Like, for example, blueberries, which my husband loves, it used to be when I grew up in the Northeast, which is where blueberries and cranberries are grown, they would be available in the month of July maybe a little bit into August, but then they would be gone. But now you can get blueberries from Peru. You can get them from Florida. You can get them from California. And you, they're shipped all over and available at times that you know that they're not being grown in your own area. That is very true. And also you can get them from a lot from China. So unfortunately, a lot of these fruits that that are imported say from overseas or even like say florida are picked under ripe and so you're not going to ever regain that nutritional value because it's the sunshine and the outdoors that ripens the fruit so mm -hmm. like you know when i buy avocados at the grocery store now i have to sit them on my counter for at least a week till they ripen on their own but it's not getting the sunshine mm-hmm Mm -hmm. And then the last factor that you mentioned was the 5G, which I know is being advertised is the one of the networks that AT&T, which is my cell phone carrier is using. What is the risk of using 5G? Well, again, it has been proven to be carcinogenic. Um, it's the electro frequencies the rays that penetrate into your body in uh, 20 and some odd years ago I was first introduced to the negative effects of um, say cell phones was because a father had a son uh, an eight or eight or nine year old son who developed brain a brain cancer and it was the same shape as the antenna on his cell phone because he was putting it against his head hmm. And there's just been so many studies proving that these electromagnetic frequencies, this radiation is very toxic. So you never have your cell phone up to your head. Um, you always have your cell phone. You don't carry it on your body. I mean, there is an epidemic in this country of infertility and men notoriously carry it in their pocket and their sperm count has been shown to be extremely low. There is a well-respected uh, newscaster uh, on one of the good morning shows. I can't think of her name now. She had developed breast cancer because she used to keep her cell phone in her, in her breast pocket, you know, and this has been reported by several uh, well-respected known individuals. So you don't carry your cell phone on your body. You don't put it up to your head. You put it on speakerphone. At night, you turn it on uh, sleep mode and at the very best it would be to turn it off and you don't have it on your night site, nightstand table. I mean, you're disrupting that sleep cycle. In that sleep cycle, your brain is detoxifies through the night. And if it's not getting adequate sleep, you're not going to detoxify the brain. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with the glyphosates, it interferes with your digestion. And so in your digestion, serotonin, melatonin, and dopamine are produced. And if that digestion cycle is impaired, we're not going to get the, the serotonin and the melatonin. And it isn't everybody complaining about being tired. Yep. You know, you don't go to sleep watching Netflix on your, on your iPad. Your bedroom is your sanctuary and it should be totally black. It's only used for two reasons. One of which is sleeping. 
and the other one you can figure out what it's for. Yeah, I gotcha. Well, let's talk about the plant-based plant -based diet. I know that that's something that we touched on, something that my husband and I incorporated into our lives and something that you switched to. Can you tell us what are the pros and cons? And I want to focus on both of them because I the pros are easy for you and I to articulate, but I know there's going to be some skeptics who will say, I need to have my meat. Well, you know, that's a fallacy. People think that they need protein to be strong and healthy and whatever in the form of meat. There is more protein in one cup of romaine than a four ounce chicken breast. Mm. What does a gorilla, a giraffe, a hippo, and a horse have in common? They're the strongest animals on the planet and they're all vegetarian. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, in the recent Olympics, the only entrance representing the United States free lifted 1,000 pounds. He's a vegetarian. I can't even imagine lifting a thousand pounds. I know, uh, like even 200 pounds. That's I right. think I'd struggle with 100. Imagine yeah. lifting a thousand pounds. Yeah, I've, I've seen the clip, it's totally amazing. Holy cow! So, anyway, so you know, fruits and vegetables have uh, vitamins, minerals, antioxidants. Um, they're easier to digest. They have fiber, which, you know, you need to, to for, your co for good colon health and just overall health. Um, it has, um, you know, you've got your tonics, which are considered herbs or vegetables are, great, are good for your brain health, good for stress relief. Whereas um, meat is, is harder to digest. And in our society, unless you're, you know the source of where you are buying your meat, it is the animals are eating foods sprayed with glyphosate. They may be eating genetically modified corn or soy. The chickens and the cows are injected with hormones for, for, to, to increase their, their, the rate of their growth. And at what expense? It's at the expense of our health. You know, mm -hmm. chickens today can't even stand up on their two feet because they are, they are so plump and, and overweight in, in such a short period of time. So meat is harder for the body to digest. So at the very least, I suggest Meatless Monday or when you go out to a restaurant, choose an entree that is meatless. You know, I used to be executive chef at a well-respected wellness spa and it was a vegetarian place and the gentleman that came with their wives on weekends, I would always go and, and say goodbye to them or how did you enjoy a weekend on, on Sunday at lunchtime when they were checking out. And it was 100% unanimous. All the men were totally amazed how satiated and good the food was and it was all plant-based. Mm -hmm. So what can I say, you know? Mm -hmm. One of the dilemmas that we find is that many restaurants don't have a good selection of vegetarian entrees. They might have one or two if we're lucky, but a lot of the menus are heavily meat-based or fish-based, and it makes it sometimes tough to find something that is plant-based. I would agree with that very much so. All I could maybe suggest is if you know you're going out, um, let the restaurant know in advance and maybe they can prepare something special for you. So mm. you have dietary restrictions. I'd like, you know, some kind of nice vegetarian entree, please. Mm -hmm. You know, because they're, they're going to be as accommodating as they can, for sure. Let's talk about a term that you and I discussed before about blue zones. Can you tell us what blue zones means? Okay, Blue Zones are five communities worldwide that boast the healthiest, longest living inhabitants with a sharp mind and agile body well into their 90s, 100s, and, and, and beyond. Mm. They are found in Costa Rica, Sardinia, um, uh, Greece, Japan, and Linda Loma in California. And 
what, how, why, there's several reasons why they live to be so long. They're physically very active, except for maybe Linda Loma, because it's a little bit more modernized, but they farm well into their 80s, 90s, and 100s. And they're, these farmers are walking 40, 50, 60 miles every single day. Sense of community is paramount. You need mm -hmm. some kind of purpose in your life. So it's so sad that when people reach retirement age, like, okay, I'm going to retire and just do nothing. And people are bored. You know, you, like, you know, I live in Canada. So people, the snowbirds flock to Florida in the winter to get away from the cold weather. But, you know, start a new hobby, learn a new craft, um, learn how to play a new instrument, get involved in your community, mentor, you know, do something you've always dreamed about doing. It's a sense of purpose and meaning. And they look out for one another. Like, you know, we put our, our old family members into seniors' homes and nursing homes because we can't look after them anymore or very often we don't want to look after them anymore. But take European people. You know, when they came to North America, putting your grandmother in a nursing home was unheard of. You looked after them until the day they died. You know, we've sort of lost that value system. It's just, oh, I don't have time. Um, I don't know what to do. I'll just put them in a nursing home. The reason doors are locked in nursing homes is so people can't get out to try to find their way home because many of them have been put there against their will sometimes. Yeah, and I know that the legal nurse consultants listening to this who work on nursing home cases will relate to that because one of the big sources of liability is the nursing home resident who is able to get out and get stuck outside sometimes in the middle of the winter, winter or in the heat of the summer and the staff don't immediately know that the person is missing. And then the individual ends up getting uh, hit by a car or exposed mm -hmm. to the elements uh, those are very difficult cases to defend and they're horrendous when you look at the facts and you realize that this person has caused the, the injury to this person is directly related to being able to figure out how to get out of the facility or sometimes the visitors come and accommodatingly hold the door open mm -hmm. so that the resident can leave. There are bracelets that can be put on the resident so that when they go through the door, it sets off an alarm, but there has to be somebody at the desk to respond to the alarm and prevent the person from leaving. I mean, it's a whole complicated set of circumstances that end up in tragedy sometimes. Well, and, and you know, speaking of tragedy, I think the, the most um, horrific story I've heard during the pandemic is about people getting a phone call saying your mother died alone in a nursing home from Alzheimer's because they, you know, they were restricting the residents to their rooms. They couldn't go out and have their meals with the rest of the residents. They don't understand what's going on mm -hmm. to be totally alone and your loved ones can't visit you. And then you die alone. I mean, that, that to me is just absolutely horrific. Yeah, it is, it's a real significant issue because there are many people with dementia who love to wander. That's one of the ways that they handle their, the nervous energy that they create. And you can't have a person wandering in a facility going in and out of other residents' rooms if some of the residents on that unit are COVID positive and some residents are COVID negative. Mm -hmm. So that's another challenge associated with being in long-term care right now, taking care of those patients and, and then for family members who cannot go and visit their loved ones. Mm -hmm. It definitely is a challenge. You also used a term when we were talking before about a blue mind. We talked about blue zones mm -hmm. as being those areas where people have greater longevity and health, and you mentioned five of them. What is the blue mind? Well, the blue mind is a word coined by Dr. Wallace Nichols, and if at all possible, uh, watch the movie Blue Mind um, on Netflix, or you, you can download it. And blue mind is the state that is achieved when you are in, on, or near water. 
it's that semi-meditative state. Why do people flock to the islands in the wintertime that live in Northern America? Because it's water, it's calming. Why do people go to their cottages in the summertime? It's water. There's water sports, power boating, canoeing, kayaking, sailing, skiing. In the wintertime, there's snowboarding, there's, there's, there's snow skiing, then there's water fountains, there's swimming. Why do people like to go to for walks near water? Because it's very calming, it's very soothing. And what you can do at home, have a bath with some essential oils and it's not restricted to women only. It's quite acceptable for men to have baths. Then, you know, Play meditative music with the backdrop of raindrops or waves crash, crashing against a shore. Put it on your computer. There's waves, ways you can reach that meditative state related to water at home. And if you're driving on a country road some, sometime and you don't, you're not in any hurry and you see a little stream, just stop by, you know, for five or ten minutes and re really change your state of mind. Mm hmm when I turn on my computer every day, I have invariably an image involving water because I've been training Microsoft when I tell it whether I like or dislike a picture. And they have been serving me up the most beautiful pictures of lakes and oceans and streams. Uh, you also reminded me as you were talking about that of when my older son was having a big temper tantrum and I was a new mother and I was beside myself. And I thought, you know what I'll do is I'll put him in the bathtub and let him play in the water. And he calmed right down, like all of the angry energy just whooshed, gone. He was playing with his toys. He came out. He was feeling better. And I, I taught to my husband, I called it hydrotherapy. We had participated in some hydrotherapy that day with him. Well, that's good. And if you think of it, we spent the first nine months suspended in water. Mm hmm. We do. We do. And well, now they're having, you know, home births in water. Yes. Yeah, that is an interesting trend. Hmm. Well, let's wrap up with some tips on stress reduction. We talked about blue mind. We talked about the value of of being out in nature and examining and enjoying the beauty, sunsets and sunrises over the water, just phenomenal. Is there anything else that you can share with us as we are focused on how we can keep ourselves healthy? Well, you know, I'm, I'm a big supporter of being grateful for everything in your life, in, in spite of COVID. And I understand there's some very sad stories. But what about the family that decided, well, we're not spending enough time together. And I think I'll curtail my traveling back and forth to spend more time with my family or I don't really like my job because it takes me away from my home. I'm going to start my own business. There's always something to be grateful for. When you're standing in line um, to go into the grocery store, when you see an older person coming back with her shopping cart, you take it from them and put it away from them. I'll buy a bouquet of flowers and I'll hand it to all the ladies standing in line. Just little random acts of kindness. So people, to put a smile on people's face to show them that you appreciate them. You know, make it a habit to call a friend that you have not been in touch with very recently, at least once a month and say, hi, how you doing? Just thinking about you. Jackie Lawson cards, they're free. Send a card to a friend saying, how are you doing? Just thinking about you. Or thank you for the dinner last night or whatever. Just to make people really feel appreciated. Those are great tips, Alexi. I, I never thought about buying flowers in the supermarket and handing them to somebody. Yeah, I, I know. was just I mean, envisioning doing that for a cashier the next time I go into a store. Because they work hard. They're on their feet for hours at a time. And many people don't appreciate them. And, and also, uh, many of them have lost their jobs in our area because of the, the, the switch over. One of our grocery stores took away all of the cashiers except for two or three lanes and turned them all into self-service, self-scanning, mm -hmm. so that we're not in contact with the cashiers. And 
you know, those are people who work really hard and don't get paid a lot. Yeah. And find out what their name is and refer to them by name when you go see them. Oh, hi, Sally. How are you doing? Or thanks so much, Sally. You know, everybody likes to hear their name. And so, mm-hmm. you know, even the gas attendant, the guy that made your hydrometer, the lady that cleans your, your house, send her a thank you note saying, you're doing a really great job and I really appreciate it. Your dog groomer, you know, send a note from your dog saying, I really feel so good now and my mommy kisses me because I smell good. Like just little acts of kindness, you know. Mm-hmm. You just don't know how it'll put a, a smile on a person's face. Great suggestions. And I think they're ones that we need to hear as often as possible. Absolutely. How can our listeners find out more about you and the services that you offer? Um, I have an app. Um, The name of the app is The Whole Health App. And if you have an Android phone, you type in the search bar, whole health, one word, lowercase. If you have um, an iPhone, you type in The Whole Health App. And what will appear is the head, like a caricature of a, of a person's head with um, brain circuits going on. And in there, under articles, I have, are you at risk for neurological disorders? It's a quiz, 15 questions with mm-hmm. answers, with short explanations. Just take the quiz just to see where you're, where you're at. And then if you do complete this quiz and send me an email, I will offer you a 20 minute complimentary kitchen pantry assessment just to go over things in your kitchen pantry that maybe you should not be eating things that are masked under different names and packaged goods or or whatever. Well, that's a generous offer. I appreciate that. Oh, my pleasure. It's just, you know, people, you know, I, I really stress to people start reading labels on everything you buy. And if you can't pronounce them, find out what it is. Because there's a lot of greenwashing going on on labels on, you know, all sorts of foods. My husband has kidney disease. So we've been paying great attention to the amount of sodium that's Mm -hmm. in food. And sometimes the misleading label that says reduced sodium, the reduced sodium broth might have more sodium in it than the chicken broth that is not labeled as low sodium. So... Reading those labels is really crucial. Absolutely. And the same thing goes for sugar. Oh, yeah. (laughs) That's another subject. (laughs) My downfall. (laughs) Uh, Well, thank you so much for being a part of the show. I appreciate that. Oh, my pleasure. It's been delightful to, to share. And it goes by fast, too, doesn't it? Oh, without a doubt. And thank you to you who is either watching this podcast on our YouTube channel, which is Legal Nurse Business, or listening to it on the audio platforms. We appreciate you being part of this show, giving us your 30 minutes of time. I hope that Alexi's information has inspired you, stimulated you to go into your kitchen and do a little more investigation of what you've got. Think about organic vegetables and fruits as opposed to the regular kind it is really worth spending a little bit more money and not getting that heavy load of chemicals and be sure to come back next week for our next legal nurse podcast thank you hi this is pat Iyer with legal nurse podcast and i have with me today alexi bracy who i just finished interviewing about a subject that is of concern to everybody, which is what can we do to stave off dementia? Alexi, can you share with our viewer and our listener, what are some of the key things that we talked about in your podcast? The importance of eliminating glyphosates from our diet. And glyphosates is the active ingredient found in Roundup, and it's found in a lot of our foods. So very important to know which foods contain glyphosates to minimize that risk uh, because it impairs your your digestion and your sleep cycle and because your brain detoxifies through the night if you're not sleeping you're not going to detoxify the brain the blue zones which are pockets of communities on the planet five groups that boast to be the healthiest longest living with a sharp mind and agile body well into their 90s and hundreds 
How do they do it? Primarily a plant-based diet, community, sense of purpose, and they have, they're physically active and they support one another and they do things that um, they look forward to each and every day. Why is a plant-based diet important? Well, there are five animals on the planet that are the healthiest and the strongest, and they happen to be vegetarian. And if you tune into the podcast, you'll find out which ones. The, um, a plant-based diet is easier on your system. It's easier to, to digest. You're getting all the nutrients. If you're eating organic, you're not getting the pesticides that are sprayed. Whereas on meat products, the animals are injected with antibiotics or eating genetically modified corn and soy products. Really important. Uh, electromagnetic pollution is, is paramount. Everybody's familiar with 5G. There are steps you can take to minimize. And the first step starts in your, beth, in your bedroom. And I'll go into the steps you can do to minimize in the podcast and also practicing blue mind. Blue mind is that semi-meditative state you reach when you are in, on, or near water. How do you do it? Listen to the podcast and I highly suggest you download the movie Blue Mind. It's well worth the watch. As you can tell, we covered a lot of territory in Alexi's podcast and she's got those great tips for you plus a whole bunch more in her podcast. Be sure to look for Alexi Bracey's show in Legal Nurse Podcast and return to catch her tips. And if you are binge listening, click on right down. You will find Alexi's program next. Thanks so much.